Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Before, I reviewed quite a lot of diode laser engravers on my channel, including 5 watt, 10 watt, and 20 watt engravers. But today, I'm going to review a CO2 engraver from Quake Cloud. This machine comes with a 50 watt CO2 laser tube and all linear rails, including the X and double Y axis. The working area is 510 millimeters by 300 millimeters, or around 20 inches by 12 inches, which is a pretty standard size for a 50 watt CO2 laser. The maximum speed of this machine is 600 millimeters per second, or 36,000 millimeters per minute, so it's much faster compared to other desktop dial laser machines, which generally work at around 10,000. This machine is fully enclosed and has a small slot for you to slide in longer materials. Generally, a reasonable quality 50 watt CO2 laser cutting machine would cost around $2,000. As this Gwake Cloud machine costs around $3,000, let's see what extra features we can get. It has a built-in 5 megapixel camera for you to align your workpiece, and it supports Wi-Fi and Ethernet for connecting to their web-based cloud software. Of course, if you prefer to use your own software, you can use the USB port to connect to your computer and run Lightburn. It has built-in LED lights, and it comes with an exhaust fan and an extra ducting system with a three-layer HEPA and carbon filter for you to exhaust the smoke outside. Unlike a regular CO2 laser cutter, which requires you to have a bucket of water ready and uses an aquarium pump to cool down the laser tube, this machine has integrated the coolant tank and cooling radiator inside the enclosure so it comes in one piece. Therefore, this machine has a nicer appearance and a more compact footprint. I would like to thank Quake Cloud for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. This machine comes in one piece, so all I have to do is remove the protective covering on the glass and the foam inside. Besides the machine itself, there is also some ducting, a 6-inch filter duct fan, cables, and some sample materials. Depending on which packet you select, you may also get a rotary roller. There's nothing to assemble or set up, so just connect the exhaust fan and you're good to go. As I already have my own duct fan, I will just connect it to the back of the machine. This machine comes with a cloud, web-based software, which I expect to have some basic features. As I've gotten used to Lightburn, I will still use Lightburn for most of my tests and just take a quick look at the cloud-based software at the end. Let's set this machine up in Lightburn. Lightburn has an auto-detect feature, but it may not work all the time. This doesn't only happen to this machine, as I have other machines that need to be added manually. As this machine is using a pretty standard Ruida controller for the laser cutter, I will just manually select it. Choose the controller type, give it a name, or just leave it as Ruida. Enter the working area of the machine, select the homing corner, which is the back right, and that's all you need to do. As this machine claims its top engraving speed is 600 mm per second, or 36,000 mm per minute, I will do some engraving power tests on 3 mm plywood, starting with the top speed of 36,000 mm per minute, and try to set all these squares from 10% to 100% power. Let's draw a preview frame and see if the material is aligned correctly. Okay, it looks good, so we can send the job. However, I forgot something this time as I didn't set the focal length. As the maximum Z height of the machine is 17mm and my plywood is 3mm, I should set the height to 14mm. Let's go back to Lightburn. By default, it will set the X, Y, and Z axis to 0 after homing. I will add a safe position for Z height adjustment. I will add a position called 0, 0, 14 and set the X to 0, the Y to 0, and the Z to 14. So, every time I select this position, the Z axis will move down 14 millimeters. Okay, I will now resend the job. There's a typo here, as the speed should be per minute instead of per second. Then, I will try 30,000 mm per minute and move it slightly lower.
followed by 25,000 millimeters per minute. And finally, 20,000 millimeters per minute. Here is the result. There is no big difference between 25,000 to 36,000 millimeters per minute, but of course when the speed lessens, it looks darker in all shades. Overall, the different speeds are all pretty usable, depending on the darkness you want. Next, I will do some cutting tests on the same 3mm plywood. I will let it start at 3000 mm per minute using 50% to 100% power, and slow it down to 1000 mm per minute and see how fast it can cut. As you can see, when cutting at 1000 to 1500, all squares were able to drop out by themselves. When cutting at 2000, 80% power or above can also still drop the squares. 70 and 60% power almost cut through, but I need to poke them out with a bit of force. It seems this machine can cut 3mm plywood at 2000mm per minute at high power and cut at 1500 or 1000 with 50% or more power. Compared to a 20 watt diode laser, which can cut at 800 milliliters per minute with 1000 power, this machine is 2.5 times faster. After that, I will try some photo engraving. I haven't done much photo engraving on CO2 lasers, as I mainly did this on diode lasers, so I will try different speeds and power between 30 to 40 percent, and see what kind of results I can get. I will try to use Lightburn and their cloud based software to engrave a few photos. As you can see, the photos of the Louvre Museum that I engraved with their cloud-based software with all default settings are a little bit light. I also have these three Golden Gate Bridge photos with light burn. One is too dark, one is too light, and one is just right, but all the details actually look pretty nice. Then I will do some cutting. Andre from Romania sent me some of his designs, so I will use them to test out this machine. I also linked his Etsy store under the description, so if you like his designs, you can take a look. Let's start with these heart pattern discs. When I recorded this video, it was Monday night and Tuesday was Valentine's Day. My dad will most likely forget about that as he normally does, so this is just to help him out a little. This took 1 minute and 43 seconds to finish. The disc itself and all the tiny hearts are super clean. I will also cut out a stand with 3mm MDF using the same speed and power. It only took 43 seconds and similar to the disc, it was also cut out without issues. Next, I will try this storage crate design. I think one sample 20 by 12 inch plywood should fit just right. I will use the same 1500 mm per minute speed and 80% power to cut this basket. It took around 3 minutes and 42 seconds and all pieces came off completely. The crate looks pretty nice after I put it together. I will pick one more design for cutting, so let's try this box with hinges. I don't have enough 6mm plywood for this box, but I think using 3mm wood and some hot glue should work. This box contains more pieces, and it requires two plywood sheets. The first one took 3 minutes and 42 seconds. The second one took 3 minutes and 13 seconds. They all came out nice and clean. As I use 3mm plywood instead of 6mm, I will make another set of hinges to make them fit. Finally, I will also cut out the acrylic top as I have some leftover acrylic. I will use the cloud-based software to align the shape on this acrylic. I can just select 3mm acrylic and cutting. It will set all parameters automatically.
After gluing them together, the box is functional and doesn't look too bad. But of course, it still would be better to use the 6mm plywood instead. Then, I will try cutting thick wood, starting with this quarter inch poplar solid wood, and I will use their cloud-based software to cut it. Cutting a straight line is clean, so let's cut a heart shape. Both the heart and the outline are nice and clean. I will now grab my thickest wood, which is a half inch poplar solid wood. As this machine claims to cut up to 10 millimeters of wood, I think this half inch 12.7 millimeter wood should be fine. The cut is perfect, with no burn and no char, so I can basically just use this machine as a saw. As the CO2 laser can also cut clear acrylic that can't be done on a diode laser, I will try to make something big. I've always wanted to make an enclosure for my Ultimaker S3, so I designed a simple one in Fusion 360. Due to the size limit of this laser cutter, I can't make a one piece for the top, so I just split this into two pieces and glue everything together. I will also make a 3D printed box for the filter and exhaust fan at the back, as well as a flexible cutout for the Bowden tube and wire. As the sample acrylic sheets that came with the machine may not be enough, besides those few 3mm acrylic sheets, I will use some other 24 inch by 12 inch sheets I bought from Amazon. And the good thing is this 20 inch working area can still fit this 24 inch by 12 inch acrylic sheet. As the front can be opened, it can also fit some other leftover larger acrylic sheets from my old projects. I then glued all three different acrylics and some 3D printed parts together to make this top cover. I bought some cheap $5 filters from Amazon, printed some flexible cutouts with Area 1 TPU filament, used a powerful 12 volt fan from my mining rigs powered by 750 watt power supply, and added a PWM controller. The cover is working well, and though my garage at night is around 16 degrees Celsius, with the cover, the temperature at the top can reach around 43 degrees Celsius, as the print is closer to the bed, so the internal temperature can reach around 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. This machine is almost 100 pounds in weight. The build is robust, with metal and steel construction and a hardened glass top, so it's super sturdy and super heavy. The appearance is also really nice, and is much better than other regular 40 watt or 50 watt CO2 lasers. 2. I really like the built-in coolant tank and radiator, as you no longer need to put a bucket of water and an aquarium pump under the table. I do have a cheap K40 CO2, but I won't be using it at all because of this reason. 3. This machine cuts really fast and really clean, and it comes with air assist. The cutting quality is better than most dialed laser machines. 4. The 500 megapixel camera is pretty handy, and it works really well with the cloud software. It can also work as a webcam to work with Lightburn, but calibrating a camera in Lightburn takes too many steps. It is a good feature, but I've gotten used to aligning the material manually in Lightburn, and I usually get a pretty good result. 5. As the machine is fully enclosed, the exhaust fan and the duct fan are generating a strong airflow to create negative pressure, so no smoke can escape from the machine during cutting, and I basically can't smell anything. Now for the cons. 1. The cloud software is relatively basic, and the web-based interface is attached to the company's website, which is a little weird. It can automatically set parameters according to the material type and thickness, which is good, but it would be better to show speed in actual millimeters per second or minute instead of percentage, so we can take this as a reference for other software. The offline software is similar to Lightburn, but the UI and features are not as good. It should still be usable, but as I already have the $120 DSP version of Lightburn, I'm not sure if I want to spend more time on their offline software. Two. The gap at the back is too narrow. I think it would be more useful if it's as wide as possible, so it would be better to make it 24 inches wide so users can use regular off-the-shelf plywood or directly use an acrylic sheet, as they are usually 24 inches wide. 3. 
there is a QR code sticker at the center of the materials, but it would be better to move it to the corner. Unless you try to avoid it, which may cause you to waste material, it's going to show up on your workpiece. This sticker is not that kind of easy to peel removable label, so it's a little annoying. 4. The tray to collect residue is good, but it would be better to use a thin aluminum plate or anything that can't be engraved, as otherwise it looks pretty messy. 5. Although this machine is marketed towards offices, homes, and even classrooms, the build is still a bit industrial. There are some sharp corners and other fine details that may need better polish. In conclusion, I am happy with this machine. If you want to start laser cutting, but don't have any experience, getting a machine like this would be an easy way to get started. Their cloud software is not perfect, but it does have very basic features that can be understood by beginners. Once you become more advanced, you can spend an extra $120 to get a copy of the Lightburn DSB version. For those who already have some experience with laser cutter machines, the main advantage of this machine is the built-in cooling system, the camera, the compact footprint, and robust build quality. If you are planning to get a 50 watt CO2 laser machine, but want to get rid of the bucket of water on the floor and want to get something better with more advanced features, you can consider taking a look at this Gwig Cloud 50 watt CO2 laser cutter. And I put the link under the description. That's all I have to share about this machine. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.